Hello everyone, it's Takuyi here. And I'm Gabby. And we are the hosts of History of Everything, a podcast which you can probably guess by the name is, well, I mean, it's about everything. Do you want to know why people thought potatoes were evil and would give you syphilis? Are you curious about all the stories of the terrible and stupid ways that people have kicked the bucket over the years? Do you want to hear tales about all of the different badasses of history and the lives that they had brought to life? Well, if so, then look no further. History of Everything is just the right podcast for you. It's available on Spotify, Pandora, and anywhere else that you get your podcast from. Join us for some fun and just see how weird and wacky history can be. Hey y'all, spooky season is here. And if you're looking for a show to whet your appetite for a little haunted history, then I'd like to invite you to check out Southern Gothic a chart-topping history podcast that explores some of the most infamous legends, folklore, ghost stories, and hauntings of the American South. We've covered all sorts of stuff from the Bell Witch of Tennessee to the disappearance of the Confederate submarine, the H.L. Hunley, not to mention our deep dives into the local lore of some of America's oldest and most haunted cities like New Orleans, Charleston, and St. Augustine. So, if you're ready for a little good old-fashioned Halloween storytelling with a commitment to quality historical research, then be sure to check out Southern Gothic today. It's available now on all your favorite podcast apps. What follows may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The world is full of stories. Stories of mysteries of curiosities, of oddities. Join Kat and Jethro Gilligan-Toth for the strange, the bizarre, the unexpected, as they lift the lid and cautiously peer inside the box of oddities. Welcome, Freak family, to another edition of the Inbox of Oddities. It's our opportunity to share more of your stories, your tales of terror, and so much more. Uh, Sometimes it's not scary at all. Sometimes it's about refrigerators, whatever. Whatever. I don't care. We don't. We just love hearing from you. Curator at theboxofoddities.com is our email if ever you want to share something with us. And of course... All of our social meds. Tara wrote this. Uh, she said, just started listening to you guys about a week ago. And I was listening to episode 555 while my husband was at the store. Kat started singing the instrumental to Sandstorm, which was fantastic, by the way. Thank you. When my husband got home, I no longer had the podcast on. But my husband sat down at the table and started singing the instrumental to Sandstorm. Stop it. I yelled, why are you singing that? (laughs) He said it was because he was looking at buying tickets for a roller skating rink. Nope, 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 nope. Wow. The boo effects keep piling up. For real. That's an interesting one. Fascinating. That's that type of thing has happened to us where there'll be a song in one of our heads And then the other person will start singing it. And we cannot, for the life of us, trace back to the common moment that we both either heard it, maybe it was on the overhead at a store, but we cannot rule out telekinesis. (laughs) No, we've never been able to rule out telekinesis. Katie sent us a message listening to number 615, and I just wanted to let you know that I have seen the stairs to the basement of the Gary house. Zach Baggins has it at his haunted museum, and my sister, our partners, and I visited slash did the after hours investigation at the property. Zach produced the Demon House doc about it, and his opinion, the basement and the stairs were the epicenter of the activity. Mm. I'm a sucker for ghost stuff, so of course I watched it. I will say there was an amazing piece of visual evidence that came from it, in my opinion. I try to be as skeptical as possible when watching ghost documentaries, but (laughs) if the circumstances ZB laid about the capture are what he says they are, then it is spooky. Yeah, yeah. They did an excavation under those stairs because some psychic said that they thought that something terrible had happened there. And so they were looking for a body, essentially. Mm. They did not find it, but they found 
some strange artifacts, things that you wouldn't expect to find under the basement stairs, including a pair of really old panties. Interesting. Katie goes on to say, a dark shadowy blob that crawls out and undulates along with the camera as it tracks a professor across the bathroom doorway. Seeing the stairs in person, along with the artifacts that were under the stairs, were chilling. We had an EMF meter and the EVP machine, and we caught activity on both while we were in the area. Of course, it's a haunted museum. It's meant to be spooky, and it's laid out as such. But you can feel the weird emanating off of it regardless. I'll bet. bet. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing and being excellent in all ways. We love you. Cheryl writes, I just wanted to take a minute and tell you how much I love your podcast. Mm -hmm. I found you the week after my mom passed away, and you all have done more to help me through that than you'll ever know. Mm -hmm. I started with the very first podcast, and in seven short months, I'm up to 2021. Wow. I sit with my pods in and laugh like a loon. My neighbors thought I'd lost my mind because I would sit on my patio and they would hear me. I assured them I wasn't nuts told them about your podcast, and now they're members of the Freak family, too. I hope someday you guys come to Little Rock and I can see you live. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your stories and your many laughs. Cheryl, the Arkansas Freak. Love it, Cheryl. Thank you. I love so much the idea that this thing that we do, it's, you know, ridiculous at times, (laughs) but it really can distract you from some garbage going on in your life. And I'm so easily distracted by ridiculousness that uh, I'm glad I'm not alone there. (laughs) Brandon sent us an email. Hi, Kat and JG. I can't believe it. I listened to the episode about the urns of the Oregon State Hospital. And I'm so excited to hear a story that I actually have a connection to. (gasps) I also just listened to the latest inbox of Oddity. Shout out to another freak from Salem. My mom worked in the administration office, managing the budget for the Oregon State Hospital replacement project. I remember her describing the urns that were found, and she said there were some urns that weren't even marked with any information at all. Just so sad. Mm. As the other Salem freak said, there was a memorial built for the urns, and my mom was involved in that as well. I've been inside Oregon State Hospital as it has been renovated, and it certainly is creepy and most definitely haunted. There are also underground tunnels that connect all of the buildings that were used to transfer items or patients without going outside. Right. My mom said documentary crews like Ghost Adventures have tried to film or stay overnight down there, but were denied because the state didn't want any bad press that may come from it. I can understand them wanting to control the narrative of that story. Right. I've been listening to you guys for so long, and I'm excited to finally have something to contribute. Thank you for all that you do. Side note, can you please do another episode where you prepare stories for each other to read? (laughs) That was fun. Yeah, maybe we will. Although we did get one nasty email about it, about how we were so self-indulgent. Did you see that one? Self-indulgent? Yeah. I think we were opposite indulgent. (laughs) We were each other indulgent. We were. I love indulging. We're very indulgent people. We're indulgy. I think the proper term is indulgerists. When you want to join the Freaks group on Facebook, you have to answer some questions to get in, one of which we had to add not too long ago about how it's not a bonkers sex club. And I really appreciate (laughs) you answering the questions because um, it does help us. One of the questions is, do you hereby swear that you will be nothing but sweetness to your fellow freaks and approach this conversation with love in your heart and pants? And (laughs) the responses that we get to this particular question are magical. Thanks so much to Nick for joining us on the Freaks Group. He answered, alas, I shall conduct myself in a manner that shall please the puggle gods. (laughs) Eli said, I'm just joining because my mom wanted to share a post. I feel like having conversations with y'all with my love in my pants might be crossing a boundary. (laughs) Christy said, yes, I promise not to be a dillweed. That's all we're asking. Right? 
Nemo said, I do solemnly swear my sweetness to all, my love for my fellow freaks, and I truly love my pants. Maybe not the ones I have on right now because they are work pants, but the ones waiting at home will be filled with love. Okay. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. This one says, I hereby swear my intentions are of sweetness and loyalty to my fellow freaks. I have plenty of love and respect in this heart of mine and for this community. I also have myriads of flying saucers in my pants that mean no harm. That's good to know. (laughs) I always wonder about that when I encounter pant saucers. One of our mods sent this to me and said, I'm going to need a more definite number of flying saucers. Mm -hmm. A couple of inbox episodes ago, Shannon sent us a a story about a haunted uh, nursing home. And that seems to be a pretty popular thing. Haunted nursing homes? Yeah, because Ash sent us this story from jolly old England. Hi, Kat and Jethro. My name's Ash. I actually have a box of oddities contribution for you. So to set the scene, the pandemic is just setting in. England goes into its first lockdown. I spend six months playing video games relentlessly. The five o'clock wine became four o'clock, became three o'clock. So by the time the second lockdown rolled around, I knew I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, and I wanted to contribute, so I decided to go for a job in adult social care. I ended up in a care home in a tiny little village that's centuries and centuries old. And this has been a care home for about 150 years before I got there. I'm going to preface this with that I I don't believe in ghosts. However, um, I remember sadly one of our residents, I believe her name was Julie, Uh, had passed away and the next day I was upstairs dropping off lunch to people who were bed bound. I was walking down a corridor and I saw a door slam. It was a toilet door at the other end of the corridor. Now this room is next to another resident's room who was often late coming down for lunch and I thought it was her. So I ran on down the corridor, knocked on the door asking if she was okay. I did see the handle pull down, shut and close. No answer. And I opened it and there was absolutely no one in there. This really freaked me out. Really, really freaked me out. I ran downstairs. There's a, there was a woman that I worked with who believes in the occult and she's very into her crystals and believes in ghosts and the rest of it. And I ran down to her and like I was seriously spooked out. I told her what happened and Without missing the beat, she's like, yeah, that was Julie. It used to be her room next to it. And that was the toilet she always used to go into. And she told me I should talk to um, Nico, one of the night staff members. The following day, I did. I was on the late shift. And he said he avoids that area of the home at night because he swears blind. And he's a skeptic like me that as he was walking down that corridor doing the nightly checks, so popping his head in the doors, making sure everyone's okay, he felt a hand on the shoulder. As he turned around, this happened the same day of me seeing the door shut by itself, the handle going up and down. I have to, I have to point out that there was no possible way it could have been wind or anything. There's not been an explanation since. Um, I've since left there. But yeah, my skepticism is not as skeptic as it used to be, to say the least. Thank you, guys. Love the show. I've been following for a long time. And Kat, I'm going to send across a couple of videos of my cats just for your benefit. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Ash, for sending that in. I'm glad things are are going well for you now. We had also touched on the idea that cats in nursing homes Mm. tend to somehow sense an impending death. And Christina, who is a member of uh, the Freak family and also the inner circle of Freaks, a supporter on Patreon, wrote, Hey, Cat and JG, it's Christina, a patron, subscriber, and longtime listener from Auckland, New Zealand. I just video, uh, finished video chatting with my daughter in Toledo, Ohio, and I have to write to you and share her story immediately. She came home from the store and and saw not one or two usual cats on her street, but at least 10 or more cats, all grouped in one yard. Being curious like her mom, she kept watching out the window at this odd cat gathering. The next thing she knew, a coroner pulled up and removed a body in a bag. Oh my gosh. 
I have heard of cats in nursing homes laying on different beds of the next people to pass, but this was a bit mind-blowing. I don't know any more than that, so in my mind, a sweet elderly Nana moved on. Thanks. Love the show, Christina. And I, I'll have you know that when we first read this story, JG read it out loud to me, and I said, ooh, the cats were hungry. And he looked at me like, that's not what's, what's, wh- <laughs> why? Why would you? Why would you? That's weird. <laughs> Spring, is that you? Warmer temps mean new Albert styles. Meet the new Superlight Collection, the lightest ever shoes from Allbirds, now in fresh colors. These must-have travel shoes have a lighter-than-air feel and barely there fit that made them the most packable shoes ever. Plus, they're comfy right out of the box. That means more comfort and less baggage. Experience how Allbirds is redefining comfort. Visit Allbirds.com and use code SUPER24 for a free pair of socks with a purchase of $48 or more. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com, code SUPER24. When Johann Rahl received the letter on Christmas Day, 1776, he put it away to read later. Maybe he thought it was a season's greeting and wanted to save it for the fireside. But what it actually was, was a warning, delivered to the Hessian colonel, letting him know that General George Washington was crossing the Delaware and would soon attack his forces. The next day, when Rawl lost the Battle of Trenton and died from two colonial Boxing Day musket balls, the letter was found, unopened in his vest pocket. As someone with 15,000 unread emails in his inbox, I feel like there's a lesson there. Oh well, this is The Constant, a history of getting things wrong. I'm Mark Chrysler. Every episode, we look at the bad ideas, mistakes, and accidents that misshaped our world. Find us at constantpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Virginia sent me a message on Instagram. Kat and JG. Have y'all ever heard of Alice in Wonderland syndrome? (laughs) Y'all should do a deep dive into it. I haven't been formally diagnosed with it, but I have the effects of it. It's crazy when it happens. By the way, I binge listen while I work from home and give random bits of facts to my 16-year-old when he gets home from school every day during our decompression sessions. Love from Houston. Virginia, I just did a deep dive. Like what, two weeks ago? So I'm super excited for you to get to that episode and uh, please tell us more about exactly what your experiences are with Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. So interested. Yeah, that's a very recent episode, episode number 615, which dropped on February 26th, the Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. Remember we got off on that discussion, I think we've brought it up a couple of times, how Often, I will say the word robot, robot. Robot. Robot, yeah. yeah. And I blamed it on Canada because I lived so close to the blame border. Blame Canada. <laughs> you can't blame Canada for much. Uh, howdy, from Alberta. The word robot or robot. Long listener of y'all and the shallow end. So this robot thing you got going, don't blame Canada for that. <laughs> <laughs> been here 57 years no one around here says robot like that my mom is french canadian and she says it normally although if you've ever watched futurama dr zoidberg says it exactly like that oh that's right so you're an alien problem solved <laughs> we have relatives who uh are french canadian I am just enamored with the accent and the turn of phrase that they have. Every time I see something come up in in French or Frenchy or Frenchy Canadian, yeah. I want to be like, let's ask Bill to say it. <laughs> when something goes very well, he says, that's Buterus is nutsing. He's the one that when we told him we got Lukey, he said, what's wrong with this one? <laughs> so... Cat and JG, guess what? My first ever boo effect. This comes from David. Recently, I listened to, I don't even know what box it was. The one where you explained where women can basically have two uteruses and two, you know, like holes. Well, today, me and my girlfriend came in to get her birth control put in. And the doctor said, hmm, let me get an ultrasound done because I found something. I'm over here shitting bricks because I thought maybe she was pregnant. But nope, she has two uteruses. No way. I said, oh my God, boo effect. (laughs) (laughs) 
and immediately apologized because I said it so loud uh-huh. and interrupted without explanation. Sure. They then asked me what I was talking about, and I explained what a boo effect was. I'm so happy. Thank you, guys. I love y'all. And I just wrote back, wow. And then David apologized if some of the wording was inappropriate. And I was like, I'm not worried about using the word holes. I use bits constantly. (laughs) Thank you, David. Recently, I did a couple of episodes on video game history. Yep. And lore. And lore. And Rick and Steve, founding members of the Order of Freaks. They've been with us from the very beginning. And the inner circle. Yep. We love them. Rick and Steve wrote, our first video game came from Radio Shack where we also went for our leather craft goods. <laughs> I miss Radio Shack. They went on to say they also made a quadraphonic A-track system. Life was simple in the 70s, and so were we. I knew somebody that had one of those quadraphonic A-track systems. The problem was, growing up in northern Maine, uh, nobody sold quadraphonic A-track tapes. What, what does quadraphonic mean? What is that? What is that? It's double stereo. It was like instead of two channels, it was four channels of audio. Where did they, did they come from? Was it, but it's not surround sound. It's all coming from the same spot. So what's the it, point? It, no, it was uh, like stereo is broken up into different channels. Of course. Two different channels. This was broken up into four different channels. It was pre surround sound. It wasn't really surround sound, uh-huh. but it was double stereo. And it was supposed to be the next big thing. They were starting to release albums in quadraphonic um Eight tracks as well, but growing up in rural Maine, we only had one place to get any music, and none of it was quad. York's Bookstore? (laughs) Yep. York's Bookstore. Was Quadrophilia released in Quadraphonic? Quadrophenia? I'm sure it was. It was about that time. Quadrophenia? Philia. What 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 kind of Freudian slip was that? Ooh, my God. Girl. What is that? Would be a foursome? I don't think so. (laughs) Okay. Let's stick with the music. Alrighty then. Speaking of music, can I can we talk about triviality? Yeah. Speaking of music, we are getting together with the people from Triviality tomorrow, and they're going to be testing us on our trivia knowledge. And I'm really hoping we get some music questions. Yeah, me too. I'm the so nervous. Triviality podcast, and uh, we'll put the link when it's available. Well, I, I don't, I'm not sure when we're going to appear on their show, but we are taping tomorrow, and it should be a lot of fun. I am nervous. I begged them to please. Stick to music trivia between the 70s and 90s. Otherwise, I'm useless. Well, that's not true. Well, Civil War, right? Right. Probably, uh, ask any war question and you war, should be okay. Sure. Nick, another member of the Order of Freaks in the Inner Circle over on Patreon, shared this story with us. Hi, Cat and Jethro. This is Nick from Louisiana. I wanted to tell a ghost story that I was recently reminded of the other day. This happened to a friend. We'll call her Kate. One weekend... Kate was house-sitting for some close friends. While she was watching TV late one night, an overwhelming feeling of calmness and serenity came over her. Even though it was a good feeling, it still made her mentally uneasy since it was out of the blue. Something caught her eye in the corner of the room, and she could make out the faded glow of a man and woman looking at her and smiling. She didn't move for a few minutes from the combined feeling of calmness and shock. The man and woman slowly disappeared and she immediately felt normal again. She told her friend what happened and described the couple she had seen. Her friend nods and finds an old photo of her great-grandparents and asks Kate if it was the couple she saw. Kate recognizes the couple in the photo. The great-grandparents had died peacefully in the house and over the years multiple family members have seen them or felt their presence. I love a happy ghost story. That's like the complete opposite of the uh, Gary Indiana House story that I did as a yep. topic a while ago. To think that uh, you feel uh, another worldly presence, but it's calming. And then you look over in the corner and there's two sweet little old nanas and papas. I'm sorry, you you would find that comforting? Yes. Yeah. If it was my nana and my papa. Well... All right, you had different grandparents than I did. <laughs> Perhaps based on your story, a sighting of your grandparents would more closely resemble the Gary Indiana story. <laughs> yep. Sorry, sorry, sweetheart. Joey Toast commented on one of our posts on Facebook 
I love all your episodes. I've listened to every one of them, sometimes twice, because mm-hmm. I love them so much. Wow. I have been a fan from the very beginning, and I'm here for all of it. You guys make me so happy, and you keep my spirits up during long days at work. I laugh with you and gasp with you, and I think you're the best people ever. Well, <laughs> that's debatable. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know you so much, but I really don't. It's just that you're just so gosh darn wonderful, and I want to hear all the things you have to say. I'm gushing, because damn it, I love you. I'm just happy that I found your podcast, and it makes my life so much better. Oh my God, that's so sweet. That re- I love it. That really Thank is. you. And every time I see your name pop up on Facebook, I get a little smile because you always say really nice things, but also because it reminds me of that Bob and Tom bit where that guy came on and sang a song about toast and it goes like, yeah, toast. And that's all I can remember of it, but uh-huh. I loved it. Okay. I loved that toast song. I think in a previous inbox of oddities we were talking about uh, a, a letter that jennifer sent us and she was listening to an older episode and just as she was eating pizza we started talking about international pizza day uh-huh. and it happened to be international pizza day that she was listening but right. it was from a year or two before right yeah yeah well wade sent us this message i love your show I'd like to share my first boo effect. I never thought I'd get one, but man, when it happens, you notice it. Currently listening to a submission from fellow freak family member Jennifer. When the segment started, I got up from my computer and walked to the kitchen. As I reached my fridge to grab leftover pizza, I put a slice in my mouth and I hear her say, Yesterday was National Pizza Day. And the sudden surprise of pizza at the same time as me biting into pizza was just wild. So this was a boo effect on top of a boo effect. Right. On top of a boo effect. Wow. We are definitely living in a simulation. Matt wrote, one of the stories from the inbox reminded me of something that happened to my dad. My dad was a well driller from the age of 16 up until a few months before his death at the age of 79. He grew up on a farm and was honestly the toughest guy I ever knew. This toughness, along with an expertise in his job, is probably why the man never wore a hard hat at work. After about 40 years of well drilling without a hard hat, one day, he decided to wear one. Around lunchtime, a piece of steel that was on an overhead rigging came loose and fell towards earth, striking my dad just off center on the top of his head and knocking him to the ground. Oh, my God. It was heavy enough and fell fast enough that there was no doubt in my dad's mind that it would have killed him had he not decided to grab the hard hat that morning for the first time in his career. In 40 years. He never worked without a hard hat again. No. That'll smarten you up some quick. Love you too, Matt. Love you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. If you would like to uh, send us a message, a story, a submission of some sort, it doesn't have to be recorded necessarily, but we do love it when we hear it in your words. Uh, but you can you can write curator at theboxofoddities.com. We also comb through the social media looking for comments to share as well. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being a part of our show and making it so much more interesting. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep flying that freak flag. And fly it proudly, you beautiful freak. And so, let it be known that the Box of Oddities belongs to you and its fate is in your hands. Therefore, it's been requested by those to whom I report to beseech you for assistance. We ask but one thing of you, to provide a five-star rating and a positive review. True, that is two things. However, it is merely a five-star rating and a positive review. Also, subscribe to us. Okay, so three things is all we ask. Three things and three things only. Henceforth, the Box of Oddities commits to the telling of stories Stories of the strange, the bizarre, the unexpected. We wish to offer our deeply felt gratitude and appreciation for your patronage. TheBoxOfOddities.com Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Are you interested in the parts of history that remain a mystery? 
Do you want to learn more about the historical myths and misconceptions used to prop up false belief today? I'm Nathaniel Lloyd. In my podcast, Historical Blindness, I delve into all of these topics, sharing puzzling tales from the past and examining hoaxes, conspiracy theories, and misremembered events that provide insight into modern politics and religion. New episodes every two weeks. Find Historical Blindness on most podcast players and platforms.